Tori, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thanks Thrilled for having me. Thrilled and excited. Yes. First and foremost, I'm happy that you are here because you are a representation of one of my one of my personal goals that I had in life as an educator was to get more women oh my gosh. involved in training. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Right, because full force, they normally look like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, yeah to be fair. Like, <laughs> yeah. White dude, white dude, <laughs> white dude. So thanks absolutely. for bringing some spice. Very much so. I'm glad to bring it. Enthusiasm to this <laughs> world. Who do you think makes better traders, though? Men or women and why? I'm going to say I, I can't give you a you know, a, a scientific statistic, I've done my research answer, but from at least what <laughs> the experience I've had so far, women just have an excellent, you know, risk tolerance. There is no ego involved. There's less revenge trading. I mean, across the board, just from the experience I've had, you know, as, you know, students or myself and seeing like my other cousins yep. learn how to trade yep. or friends, it just seems like we've we've got such a, a level head, risk tolerance, no ego. Um, I'm going to have to go with uh, women are probably better traders. <laughs> I, How I'm wild. Good. If we knew that, too, I feel yeah. like there'd be a lot more of us in there. <laughs> For sure. Well, I'm going to agree with you 100%. And a lot of the reasons that you mentioned, I've noticed that one of the profiles for, like, the best trader imaginable. So if, I forget who asked me in an interview not that long ago. But like, what's the best trader if you had to if you had to make it? Who would it be? Okay. Third grade female teacher. Okay. 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 And then right behind them would be a nurse. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that too. So they love money. They they need they want a lot more of it. Maybe in that current profession, they just they aren't getting as much monetary acceleration as they want. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. So that's a force. Absolutely. And then they're amazing with time management. Yep. They're incredible with emotional control. They don't let outside forces really dictate how their internal world's feeling. Yep, I can see that. And they just have so many of those characteristics. I'm like, man, if Absolutely. I can just boop, boop, yeah. you're going to crush it. I can see it. I can see it. I wondered if um, the almost entrepreneurial stay-at-home mom would be up there as well. 100%. Like the having to regulate just, I mean, everything? raising kids. Yes, everything <laughs> in that in that yeah. sense. Uh, I feel like that's that's got to be one of the also up there, top three for sure. Yes, 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 yes. I agree with you on that one. So speaking about um, women in trading, so I know that your uncle is the one that really taught you and mentored you in trading for yeah. a long period of time, which is a really cool story. Way cool. <laughs> awesome. And you and him, everyone's trying to teach your family. And a lot of people didn't stick and you're the no main one. one that did. Yeah. I'm it's, in a similar situation. Okay. Yeah. Fair, fair. Just trying to teach my whole family. Yes. And everybody wants to learn. Everybody wants to learn. It's, yeah. they're excited at first. They're eager. They're ready to roll. But then it's the learning curve of this is going to take way longer than they anticipated. Way longer. They get to see, you know, the yep. they get to see your results here now. And just like I got to see my uncles and everyone else in our family got to see it. And their expectations even as clear as he made it. He's like, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Or, you know, I didn't even get to see success until like 10 or 5. So even with that, like, uh, disclaimer up front, people still have that one-track mind. They're like, ah, I want to get from 0 to 100, like, as soon as possible. Thursday. <laughs> yeah, Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Three months from now. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. That's been the crazy part with... um everyone in the family it's been you know his own sons and daughter nieces and nephews cousins family friends everyone has been where i've been they sat down they spent the hours with him maybe mine was a little bit more in depth because i went to go live with him for like a whole year so sure. i had every opportunity like breakfast lunch and dinner i mean we talked about it well that's called full immersion yes yeah you said yes you signed up for greatness and excellence yeah. And went all in. All in. Yeah. I mean, which I guess, to be honest, for the most part, I'm sure most of the family could have had that same opportunity or mm -hmm. option as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Most people do. They just have to take it. Mm -hmm. So talking about family, a deep question for you, Tori. Ooh, okay. <laughs> How do you think the relationship between your mother and father affected your relationship with the money? Oh, gosh. This is an excellent one. I've been reading um, a few books and talking about your... Uh, relationship with money how much it comes from your parents is like the impact is huge and it's always been we don't have enough money to do this or um you know even food stamps child support like all of the the things money was so icky to me oh it was awful like especially when you bring in child support with like a, a separated family it's just like demanding child support or not getting it or 
I just remember as a kid, like thinking, ew, money is yuck. It's causing these fights. Mm. It's like I, every time I would bring it up as a child, it'd be uncomfortable. And then even going into like my teenage years, early adulthood, very uncomfortable conversations always. So it was absolutely a, a strange thing to, to get comfortable with it. And to, to look at money now as more so like just a, a number or a tool instead of like connecting it with emotion or like just uncomfortable conversations, I guess. But it, it played a huge role. It, it uh, put a ceiling, I think, for the most part. How would you break through the ceiling? My uncle. <laughs> if I hadn't, like, yeah. he just... What's this guy's name? <laughs> it's Mike. Mike. Michael. Okay. Mike Aston. <laughs> Mike. When, I, when do I get to meet Mike? That's the question. I mean, if he, he comes out to, <laughs> to Nashville occasionally, yeah? occasionally, okay. yeah. I'm sure cabin. he'll do, like, the occasion cabin trip, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Shout um, out to Mike, man. <laughs> you changed lives. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I would say he, he helped. I got to see what the, the benefits of money did and it was time. And that was the biggest example was time. He was home all the time. It was weird to me. I'm like, why is your dad staying home? Yeah. I'm like, your dad is here all the time. Does he ever leave or no? And he was, he was home all the time. He took us on trips. Like all of my fun experiences as a child, a lot of those were with my uncle. So it was, he had the time and I finally associated that with money was just more time. So I have a fun question then for you on regards to the money and like that ceiling, because I grew up in a similar environment where for me, money was this thing that you have to be born into. Yeah. You can't really have. And if you do get, it's probably through greed or through stealing or okay. through some type of negative energy. Yeah. Yeah. And so there wasn't a lot of positive energy associated with being very wealthy. Mm -hmm. So for you, what was that fear when you, when you got your vehicle, right? It's a nice, beautiful Porsche. Thank you. <laughs> when you got it, there was probably that I'm going to be judged for this. Maybe yeah. people are going to look at me weird. People are going to notice me. And also it's probably a goal that you had for a long time. Mm -hmm. where like, oh, I really finally want my dream vehicle. Absolutely. Walk me through that paradigm shift for you. I would say it was, I want to start with my, my watch is the first one. This okay. was the first thing that the, the vehicle a little bit less, but the watch I, I struggled with it. I was like, oh my gosh, people, everyone in my family is going to say it was a giant waste of money. And I mean, obviously watches are more of a guy thing too, but it's just like, I, my first watch was like the first nice thing that I've done for myself. And I, Definitely struggle with wondering, okay, is everyone, even like parents, were they going to be like, you, you wasted that money. What, what are you thinking? Or even, even my uncle, he's not very flashy or showy. I was kind of nervous what he would say too. Sure. And I'm like, I even tried to justify it in my head. I'm like, okay, I could resell it. It's still an investment. <laughs> but then I like had to kind of break through all of that. I'm like, you know what? This is for me. Like I, I want to get myself something nice. I'm also a Leo, so I'm a little bit showy. So like, okay, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to do something nice for ourselves. And it. It took maybe a few weeks of, of research and wrestling with that, but I, I came to terms with, you know, I've worked hard enough for this. I think that's what helped it, knowing that, okay, I've been trading for nine years. Of course I deserve something nice. Mm. Of course. Mm. I've put everything into this. So it was, I think that right there just tipped the scale. It was like, okay, you deserve this. You've put in the work. The deserving. Yeah, yeah. It always comes down to deserving. And the quicker as traders that we can make those shifts – the better, because for me, I agree with you 100%. I tell traders as quickly as humanly possible, if you can create a profitable trade or environment for yourself where you're up, can you please take that money and purchase something that you've either wanted, yes. you need something that would bring in value to your life? For me, it was a fridge. Really? Yeah. A fridge? Okay. Okay. ice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, what kind of fridge are we talking here? Is it the double door? You got maybe some cool buttons on this Double guy? door okay. with <laughs> buttons, and I could press it, and ice would come out. Oh, okay. There we that go. That was wealth to me. And that was the first one? That was the first that thing that did it for you? That was the first thing I really I bought. see. Okay. Because I didn't grow up with a refrigerator. I see. Yeah. I did a little bit of research, and I saw that, like, grew up with, like, some dirt floors, trailers, yeah. and, okay, totally. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's wild. So, it's all good. Like, you know, as poor as you can grow up in the U.S., but yeah, yeah. I always make fun of my wife. Like, she grew up in the USSR. Ah, uh, okay, <laughs> so, okay, okay. I, I'm like, I was poor. <laughs> She's like, whatever, dude. She's like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, <laughs> do your thing. And for me, it was a big fear of judgment, especially from family, friends. Yeah. Like, if I get wealthy, then I'm here, and they're going to notice it, or they're going to comment on it. 
or they're going to ask me for it. And then I'm going to feel like they didn't deserve it. And I'm going to have to say no, which is yeah. going to make me an asshole. Yeah. And now no one likes me. And so it was a big fear of me. It was like the fear of love and acceptance from other people. Oh, absolutely. That was a big one. So on that flip side of the coin, what is your biggest fear? Biggest fear in general? Biggest fear in general. Um, It is, maybe this is like a hopeless romantic thing. It's ending up alone. <laughs> I, I think... If, if I had to do, you know, all of this work and put in these years of trading and get to these levels of success, and if I knew that it would be alone at the end, I think my path would probably change. If uh, And that could be family. Maybe I would dedicate more to family if I knew that, like, okay, maybe you don't have this, you know, this vision of the family that you dream of in your head at the end. But essentially that's that's the, the fear factor is if, if I end up alone, that's – here, that's the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. <laughs> it's a valid answer. Yeah. I think that's a lot of people's fear about relationship because, again, I admire your tenacity just from doing this for nine years because nine years is a long time. Me and you both know on YouTube there's a lot of like two year, three oh, year, absolutely. four year, posting the PL, the Lambos. I'm like, hey, awesome. That's amazing. I love Lamborghinis. <laughs> but for nine years, it just tells you that you are putting in so much time at the beginning that no one notices. Exactly, yeah. Tony Robbins says you get paid for in public for what you practice in private. Yeah. So a random another question about practice. You speak exceptionally well. Yeah. You do. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Did you have training? Have you <laughs> no, practiced this? No, absolutely not. No, 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 no. You just grew up perfectly articulate. I, I guess. I guess so. I did um <laughs> in, in elementary school, I did the uh, the newscast. So, like, I would tell everyone oh. what we're having for lunch today. We would do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance together. You know, fun new things that we're doing with the principal. So, I, and I would read off a prompt. So, maybe that's absolutely plays a role into. I uh, think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. So, what was your elementary like, elementary school? I mean, um, It was a elementary in Middleburg, Florida. And I went to that same, that was the only school that I went to for the start to finish was kindergarten all the way till I moved on to junior high, junior high after that. Oh, sick. Okay. I went to four different junior highs, four different high schools. So that elementary school was, was a huge role in like how I'm shaped today because that was just one place I stayed put for kindergarten to I, sixth grade in Florida yeah. before yeah. you move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... It was, it was incredible. It was, it was my, my space. I, I knew everybody there. I was on the news crew. So all the younger kids knew me, you know, Oh, of course, absolutely. So it was just, it, and I, I even ran for like president when my last few years, Ooh. Oh yeah, I didn't win, but I got it's something. Okay. I think like maybe treasury, but still anyways, <laughs> <laughs> they gave me something. Yeah. They gave me something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Tynes elementary. It was in Middleburg, just this little, um, kind of Country, rural place outside of Jacksonville, Florida. A few dirt roads. Um, took the bus on a dirt road to get there. It was a great, <laughs> it was exactly a great school. What talking about. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Gainesville. Oh, okay. I had tons of friends from Fernandina. Excellent. So yeah, I'm yeah. Very here. cool. Okay. Yeah. Middleburg is just um, like uh, northwest of Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Yep. So speaking of schools then, talking about president. <laughs> Let's say you're president. Okay. Should stock market, futures, forex, active oh, trading be quit. taught in school? I mean, comma, even, how would you make it happen? Okay, that part's, that's the tricky one right there. First question, obvious yes. Duh. Obvious yes. And to be in, <laughs> even outside of that, if we didn't even incorporate the markets, like just financial literacy in general, like I think maybe sure they taught us how to write a check, maybe. But like budgeting and finance and maybe even entrepreneurship, savings, uh, taxes, why is that not even, I mean, I'm talking sixth grade still, maybe mm -hmm. junior high, still preparing at minimum. But if we had to do stocks, absolutely. I mean, maybe that could be like a, uh, you know, an elective or you could pick like Forex elective, stocks elective, <laughs> futures elective, but that should absolutely, that's point blank period. That should be taught. Now, how is going to be tricky. You've got to have the right educators. Um, and I guess that would, you would need to require like probably, you know, degrees in finance or economy, I think the, the curriculum would be tricky because then you could get ones that teach like strategy, but maybe that's, maybe that wouldn't be as relevant. It just maybe understanding the markets in general and the, the benefits that you can reap from learning them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe strategy. We'll, we'll leave that for whenever they've, they've graduated or out, but mm -hmm. just an idea of literacy of the markets mm -hmm. that should, that should absolutely be a requirement. Like a macro 
big picture. Yeah. Here's kind of how it works. Something, something of that nature. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of my big goals in life. To get it into the education system? Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, what are, what are some of your ideas for how you could do that? I'm fascinated to hear that. It'd be... Wild. Well, I, I agree with you. I think I think it starts from a top-down approach, but it also starts from like a grassroots perspective, right? So a grassroots perspective of imagine if all the traders that you have on your social medias, all the traders I have on our social medias, we go, hey, fam, let's go into a middle school or a high school and just give people there a, a glossing overview. Okay. Supply, demand, support, resistance. Yeah, yeah. Buy low, sell high, risk, reward. Yeah, okay. If that was it, like... You do a grassroots perspective of that. That would okay. be at least at least a push. Yeah. Right. A uh, if you're building a huge wall, you put dynamite in a small hole and you break up some rocks. Right. The whole right. wall doesn't come down, but you got a little bit of a chunk taken out. And that would be at least a perspective of it. And I like how you mentioned the strategy piece because the fear that I heard you say was, well, what if someone's going in there and they're teaching these kids incorrectly? That's the fear. That's right. The fear. And then you have to have the perspective of, okay, how do you? certify and quantify trading right. where it's eligible for everyone to kind of access it. And I think having certain instructors who teach it for more of a math based, less opinion based, fair, fair. Hey, here's how it works type of class would be very, very easy to create, right? Here's how shorting works. Mm -hmm. Here's what a market maker is. Here's what bid ask spread okay. is. Here's limit Absolutely. orders, things like that. Yeah. And still even supply and demand support and resistance. Mm -hmm. Those, those very basics. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be, a strategy per se, but like understanding, you know, this is an area of support because this is an area of resistance because the likelihood of this bouncing off of these are high because. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah. And then a macro, like b blending economy with like, like supply oh and demand. Gosh, yeah. Like, like you're in a trade right now on platinum. Okay. Yeah. What makes platinum go up in the major vicinity of the world? What makes it go down? And talk about that and just have these open discussions. Oh, totally, totally. I think it could happen pretty easy. Yeah, you know, I think so. It's just a matter of maybe we've got to, like, spark that interest. Like, you know how they've got, um, not necessarily career day, but, you know, they have, you know, law enforcement come in. They show the kids, like, all this cool stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, someone like myself coming yes. in with, like, you know, the nice things that I have and be like, you can totally do this. I mean, it, it's more of that shock factor, that awe factor, and it's a little showy, but to spark, like, you know, some motivation. To, to be say, fair, you know kids love cars. They do. <laughs> That's really all. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I loved Hot Wheels as a kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had a Lamborghini's. You know, my favorite car when I was, like, six was a Lamborghini Diablo. Okay, okay. You know, so I was just sitting there dreaming about that car for a long time. So just showing some kids, like, hey, hey. I, I got this crazy cool car. Even if you have to rent it, right? <laughs> I mean, right, even so. It's just, just to, to see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Just a few moments ago, you said a word that I love slash hate. Okay. Taxes. Oh, God, I know. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a long topic. We have nine hours of podcasting <laughs> on that. But as a trader, mm -hmm. how does Tori handle taxes? The world wants to know. So, for the most part, my uncle has helped me with taxes. My. Hasn't been an issue. This year, I have to do it myself. Ow. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, my, my only Ow, advice Tom. is to get help, as much help as you can. Um, trying to find the right CPA, the right tax guy, making sure that if you're trading, you're trading for your LLC so that you can get as many write-offs as possible. That's, I mean, those are my few, my knowledge in the tax realm is still low. And huh? the results of how much I owe this year is a direct result of that. And it really hurts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, oh, from um, 2023? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But you learn. I mean, next year I know if I have to buy a G-Wagon at the end of the year so that I don't have to pay taxes, I will gladly drive a G-Wagon instead of pay the government the amount of this. So th that's the that's the mindset now. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Yeah, taxes hurt. But just getting the right help, I'm still figuring that out myself. Um, right. Talking to the right people, I... I know some people that are pretty high up in the in the industry in the space. So getting as much advice as I can, hiring the right people for help, getting the right advice. That's I think I said that one twice. I guess that's crucial. It, right advice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's where down. I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you ever need additional assistance, I'm always happy okay. to help you. Oh, yeah. absolutely. We'll probably be having that conversation after. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Um, it's that's that's one something that I learned from the school of experience and pain. Yes. <laughs> school <laughs> of life. Probably like your uncle Mike. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, 
I got a tax bill once. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it makes you, <laughs> that's exactly what it does. <laughs> yeah. I made faces. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember you saying that you started off with like a $5,000 account and that was kind of trading. Was it stocks or futures when you started trading? Five um, when I first started trading, it was the stock market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And that was simulation. Yep. Um, I actually was able to trade my uncle's account at the beginning just yep. to really, truly get a good feel for the stock market. But then when I started trading on my own, 5,000 futures. Beautiful. Okay. So with the futures trading. Give me a quick overview verbally. What's your strategy? Oh, it's it's easy. We could this is an easy one. It is truly trend lines. Trend line bounces, trend line breaks. Um, there is the occasional support and resistance that will come into play, maybe give me more confidence in my position. Um, I don't necessarily use these support and resistance for entries and exits, but if you know price has bounced off of an area of support and is also breaking a downward trend line, I'm feeling good about that position. So I'm maybe going in a little bit heavier, but it's it's an incredibly simple strategy. Mm -hmm. I am looking for trends and I'm either gonna get in on that trend and when that trend is no longer happening, when the trend breaks, I'm looking for the opposite direction. What's your main time frame that you're doing all this analysis on? Um, it is, I've settled on the four hour. Most of my trading career has been in like the five minute, the one hour, the four hour. I have never seen success like this. I don't know if it's because it just meshed perfectly with my lifestyle. Um, if you move to higher time frames and it's just a more significant time frame. So mm. when when things move in the four hour, like they're they're truly you know tanking in that direction or headed in that direction. Sure. Whereas in the five minute, things can bounce back and forth all day. Yeah. Are you so, more bearish or bullish naturally? Um, I have a short bias. Okay. <laughs> it just feels so good and it happens so quick when things go Most short. Most girls like short bias. Really? Yeah, I don't Interesting. know why it is. They like tall guys, but they like short trades. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so weird. I've come to find that it's absolutely the it's like that uh that same chemical that's released when you're gambling, I'm I'm almost sure. Or just maybe making money. But when when you go short and I've seen this in like the the YM, the NQ, a lot of the indices, indexes. Yep. When they go short, they just happen so quick. It's yep. just like such a hard snap. Whereas if you're in, you know, a long position, it's just like a slow and steady. We're going up. But mm -hmm. man, when it goes short, like you're just making money quick. Mm -hmm. So it's that that feeling. It feels good and you want to do it again. I agree. <laughs> yes, yeah. I agree. So making money quick. All right. So we're talking day trading, four hour charts, five minute charts. What's investing look like for Tori and how do you do it? Oh, my God. I have not even the slightest idea. Okay. Long term, yep. four hour is the only experience I have. That's something that I absolutely want to get more into this year. It's such a different game. I mean, I could look I could look at a chart and trade it the same way that I would in the four hour, like maybe in the the daily or the weekly. Mm -hmm. Uh I can't even imagine trading a monthly time frame, but I mean I guess that's that's long term trading. So yep. I I could trade it as similar to the strategy that I do now, but I think there's just a different there's a different game to the long term investing. That's something that I want to educate myself a little bit more in this year. Okay. Sweet. So if we're talking long term that probably includes family, let's say five, 10 years from now. Yeah. How do you think having a family, marriage, children would affect your trading slash, you said this word earlier, lifestyle? Yeah. I would say um, not a huge change. The The four hour time frame, I have come to find that I can live my life as per usual, yep. normal. I mean, we're in a trade now and I'm not, I'm not, or we're in a trade. I'm in a trade now and we're, we're doing this podcast. Like and you took the trade with <laughs> for me? That's so nice. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in a trade now and I, I've been in this one for over a week now, I think. And it's just, I go about my day. I'll check it, you know, occasionally when my alerts go off. That's the best part, I think, is it's um, entries are when price is crossing or breaking out of or touching, you know, these trend lines or these areas of support and resistance. And that could happen at any time. But it's it's not consuming my life. It's not consuming my time. My chart time is minimal. So I think, you know, having a family and five years from now, I don't think it would change anything. Mm -hmm. If anything, maybe I would move up higher, even higher in a time frame mm -hmm. and start maybe transitioning to that, that more investing, more that long term. But um, as of right now, this four hour time frame, I could absolutely, you know, juggle it, juggle it all. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because what I heard you say there is, you took the time early in your career to spend the chart time Oh yeah. to master the sentiment, to take the losses, to get the learning experiences, the L's as they're called, yeah. right? Take the L's, lose on the trade, win on trades and just get the chart because eventually it, for me, four to five years clicked where I'm like, 
I see yeah, it now. Yeah, I, ah. I think I'd agree with you. That that four or five years, I don't know if it's maybe the the confidence you get or, I mean, anything. I bet if you were to do tennis for four years, like, I bet after four years you'd be like, you know what, I'm pretty good at this. I'm better at tennis than I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see that. Okay, I agree with you. All right, so some two just random fun questions. What's your favorite scene from a stock market movie specifically? Oh <laughs> Describe it and then tell me why it's your favorite. Okay, I'll go with... Um, in the big short, Christian, it was Christian Barrel, right? Mm-hmm. He did the the big short. Yep. Um, I loved his character in general. He's like this goofy guy. He's like, play, he got drumsticks in the computer. He's just like, he knows something that everybody doesn't. I I think I just liked his his character. That was pretty realistic, although the amount of money he made was unfathomable. But yeah. uh, I think as the character, I think if I if I had to give just one answer, that would be it. That's, that's <laughs> very, Dr. Michael Berry, real guy. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Cool dude. He just exited straight on SMCI. I feel like I just read that. Yeah. I just read that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all good. He's uh, you could be right, you could be wrong, but people judge you like at that point. They're like, "Oh, he lost on a trade. What an idiot!" Oh yeah, no. Like, I mean, are you kidding me? Even at this point that we're at, I've get I've gotten told that I'm an idiot, and so many times I'm like, "Listen, <laughs> like I'm, I'm good, dude. I'm I'll gonna be you. all right. I'm gonna be fine. I lose <laughs> yeah. on trades. It's okay. Yeah, I make absolutely. wrong analysis. Like it's not the end of the world. No, no. Just don't lose a bunch of money. Don't yeah. Don't maybe don't lose it all. <laughs> Which I know you haven't done yet. Well Thank done. You. Well, I not appreciate yet. That. You'll never do that. But you didn't, at your early point in your career, lose a bunch of money. Exactly. And just get exactly. Crushed. And I think that that was similar to the "Are women, you know, better trader than men?" And then it was, you know, do you think? Oh, you know, I think it was the biggest fear, and I'm thinking um, ending up alone. But then it was also trading world biggest fear. Obviously, losing it all is a is a fear, but I think maybe losing the ability to trade would be even more of a fear. Like, imagine what, what would you do? Like, if you can't trade anymore. Now, I am glad that I had this entrepreneurial mindset. So, like, hopefully in the next five years I've got, you know, equity in businesses or I've got my own businesses or I've got other things. I've got my income spread. But that absolutely would be one of my biggest fears, you know, in the trading world is losing the ability to even be able to do that, Mm. to be able to make money in the market. For me, it'd be like losing my eyesight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's my entire identity. It'd be terrifying. (laughs) Yeah. Right? (laughs) So, yes, losing it all is an obvious one. That's an easy... That would suck. Well, what's your worst loss in your trading career? Um, it was, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Um, and it kind of, it. I'm very self-aware. Yeah, so when I when I took this loss, I, I went inward. And I was like, what is going on with you? What is this? So it was right after the FX Summit in Miami. I am hanging out with all these, you know, big influencers. These Yeah, these traders. And I'm like, I'm comparing, you know, and that's the thief of joy right there. And I'm, you know, I'm like, okay, I need to be at this level. I need to move quicker. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. And I, I go real heavy in a position, real heavy. And I took, I think it was what maybe. What position was it? Crude? It was the, no, it was the YM. It was one of the indexes. Okay. Um, I believe the YM is the Dow. Yep. I think it was the Dow. And I took a short position. And go figure took a short position (laughs) and uh it's working it's working i'm up like maybe was this recently uh, it was just this past fx summit in um june yeah 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 and um i'm in a short position and it's working i think i'm up like maybe two to five thousand dollars and it's fairly quickly i'm like okay we're feeling good it snapped against me so hard i mean not even news there was no news it's just it wasn't working and i couldn't let go of the position the ego was there especially like Yes, the mindset of like, and I believe I was still in Miami, and I'm like, this has got to work. Like, I'm trying to get to this level of these guys, and I held, and then I held, and I held, and I think I finally, like, I cut the loss at maybe 15000 and that was my biggest loss, and that mm-hmm. still is to date my biggest loss, mm-hmm. and it it hurt. It stung, especially having to solidify it. You're like, okay, like, I could hold this. There's a hope it comes back. But when you finally, you know, come to terms with, okay, I have to solidify this loss. I got to go ahead and just close it, take the loss, make it official. Um, I, I wrestled with it, you know, was going inward, figuring out why, why so much ego. And I mean, the signs are obvious. Like I'm at the summit, I'm seeing all these people making tons of money, talking about their trading, um, going to dinners, seeing the nice cars, the lifestyle. Miami in general is just That's like beautiful. a, what a place. oh my gosh, yeah. wow factor. Wow. And, um, but then luckily mm. like things turned around and I'd say a week or two later, I'm able to like make a video about it and laugh about it and be like, I lost 15,000. Sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, again, that's yeah. why people like you from what my interpretation is of your followers and people in your comments is that you just talk about, Hey, losses wins. I'm not special. I'm just trading. I love the markets. I lose. I win. I lose. I win. Here's some stories about it. Yeah, exactly. 
Valuable. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a good reminder. And when you're when you're locking that in, realizing that loss, there's also a sense of relief that happens. Oh, like, there oh, is. Okay. There is. It's a bad Mentally, relationship. You're yeah, like, ah, oh, it's yeah. over. I'm oh, out of true, it. true. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> there is a sense of relief and release. Um, yeah, because and I, I believe I was holding it for a while. I mean, I'm in the four hour time frame now, and it's even that was such a struggle to make that transition. So 2023 was my first year. Uh, in that time frame. So mm-hmm. I jumped from one hour to four hour. Got it. And four hour was, it took a toll. Like yeah. the, the first half of the year was exhausting. I'm not used to like having an open trade for like days at a time. And like, if it's, if it's a winning trade, seeing it come back to nothing or seeing it come back to negative, or if it's a trade that's not working out and you have to, you know, a week later, you're like, wow, I got to close this. And it's a loss. And I just spent a week of my time. Yeah. So that was something that was huge for me to wrestle with. Like just that time being yeah. invested in the trades. Well, I think a lot of people have a hard time, and I would love to get your perspective on this, when Warren Buffett says, rule number one, never lose money. No. Oh. But let's say you go up $3,000 on a trade. How do you interpret that rule from the GOAT, right, from the Oracle? never lose money when we have to lose money on trades. We absolutely do. That's a, that's a fascinating one because obviously it's, that is not the rule. Um, it's got to, it has to be interpreted differently. Um, I would say that's so tricky. If I could, in, if I could interpret that with, with my own strategy, it would have to be never lose money outside of the planned loss or the initial loss mm. that you are uh, ready to take or that like you have that. planned to take. Yep. Don't lose money outside of that. So um, I, I give my lines, you know, terms, like different vocabulary. I, I'll call them uh, an action line and a safety line for my trend lines. And the safety line, obviously, it keeps me safe. Do not trade outside of that safety line. So that would be, I think, my exact interpretation. Don't lose money. Don't trade outside of that safety line. Mm. So that would be that would be mine. Maybe just don't lose outside of the plan. Yeah. Okay. That's a beautiful answer. Yeah. I like how you've... You use the safety line because that is a positive word. A lot of people don't like the word stop loss. Right. No, exactly. Like, I'm losing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My uncle, that was the first thing that he did. Oh, it was so cool. He's 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 heavy into the, the psychology and yeah. the even the conspiracies behind how the market moves. I mean, I love it. Oh, my gosh. So love cool. conspiracies. Oh, yeah. Good all day. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the first thing was he's like, people call these trend lines. We're not doing that. Like, we're going to try to change as much about this as we can from, like, your average Joe. So we're going to call them, he actually called them LOCs, which was line of change. Mm. And he just had one name for every trend line. So if the line of change got broke, that means price is changing direction. Um, And that's when we will, you know, engage in our trade. So there was so many things that he would change just terminology wise in in trading. And I I just love that because it helps psychology wise. It certainly can. Um, Right, the words you use create the world you live in. Yeah, yeah. So you start using a lot of the different words, and that's why I tell people, be very, very cautious when you describe a trade or a day. A lot of people go like, oh, that was a rough day. <laughs> We're like, oh, my gosh, I got murdered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's fair. It's hard, to, it's hard to be very conscious and aware of that because it does play a huge role. Got to try. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. So speaking of day, then, do you have a certain, like, is it average amount day, week? How do you structure your income from a business perspective of your trading? Um, with my trading, I, I don't, I truly am just open to receiving whatever the market can give me. My, my biggest thing is trying to truly stay in for the entirety of moves. I, I don't have a planned, um, a set, you know, I'm going to try to make 10,000 this month, or I'm going to try to hit 20,000. Um, I've got goals, but I, I've found that when I, when I gave myself a set number that I tried to hit, it threw everything off. Like even there were times in my early trading, I was like $200 a day or $200 a trade. Mm -hmm. Like, let's do it. 200 easy. I would find myself getting out of beautiful moves way too early. If I took a loss that day, I would make myself place another trade just to try to make up for that loss. So I found, you know, limiting myself to set amounts. Uh, it's, it, it only kind of put a burden on my psychology. So I am truly open to receiving whatever I can get. That's the best way to put it. Whatever the market can give me, I'm here. I'll take it. (laughs) I like the word receiving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, To use those two words interchangeably, what you said earlier, the universe will only give you what you, you will only receive what you feel you're worthy of receiving. Oh my gosh, full circle. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, very much so. I don't feel like I deserve, right, using that word, to receive this. 
You're not going to. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you won't. Yeah. Because <laughs> you feel like you didn't deserve it. I know, it's that's wild. And it's crazy to see to see where I've come in my trading. It's I'm in a $20,000 trade right now, and that's that's still hard to wrap my head around. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. Oh, it's wild. I just could have never, I couldn't, I've, I never saw that amount of money yeah. just in my bank account. Yeah. Or even $5,000 yeah. before that, just years before. To talk, I, one of my favorite things in the world is talking about the abundance and the size of the market. And yeah. Oh my gosh. Because it makes your brain go, wait a minute. I'm not important. And it takes your ego and go, it doesn't exist. Dude, right? It doesn't exist. <laughs> the limit does not exist. No. Uh, for, I mean, I, I I'll talk about stocks. I don't know about platinum specifically, or I know a little bit about futures, but Tesla. Okay. Every day, $84 billion goes oh in and out of Tesla. Oh my gosh. Every day. Just I Tesla. Mean, imagine the, I, Wow. That's hard to wrap your head right? around. <laughs> Which means like mathematically every every day the US stock market does approximately four trillion dollars, which is every year is forty seven, forty, forty eight quadrillion dollars every night. year. And so when you're talking about just just on the billion dollar scale, the day, just Tesla, yeah, one yeah. day, that's a quarter of a billion dollars a minute. And you're worried about twenty thousand? Yeah, right. Or, or you put it or you put in eighty whatever, eighty grand, or you bought yeah. you bought eight shares. You are and you're like worried. A, just a teeny tiny drop in the bucket. It's you're, a wild. You're playing in the ocean. It's okay. I know, I know. And so it's a, it's a good thing to remind and I try to do this every day, just remind myself of the abundance so I don't like you said, I don't have the scarcity of I need to make this. I oh need. my gosh, yes. Because when you approach the market from need and dependency, you're gonna get squished. And that's what most people do in relationships. Yeah. Right? They don't oh fall gosh, into yeah. love, they fall into need and dependency. Well, you have a relationship with money and you have a relationship with stocks yeah, or, or trading. Mm -hmm. And so if you have that relationship with that need and dependency, guess what? It's going to be a toxic relationship oh, with awful, yeah. money and trading. Oh, yeah. There is so many, there's so many things in life, relationships, um, psychology wise that mesh beautifully with just your results as a trader. Mm -hmm. Like if you're very self-aware, if you understand your emotions and why you're feeling this way, and that's, you know, even with relationships or family, like if you can master that side of it, your trading will only result in a benefit. Your trading will only get better. And I think that's something that I, I try to preach, you know, in uh, the trading world is, it sounds cliche and it's tricky because we're in a we're in a weird world where if I was to say, you know, go to therapy, like some people are they're like ego is absolutely not. But I think maybe it doesn't have to be therapy, but just like truly start thinking yeah. inward. Like thinking inward about where these emotions are coming from, sure. trying to hone in on them so sure. that if in a relationship things go south, you can keep a level head, you can think clearly, make good decisions. Same in the stock market or you know, futures market. If you're taking a loss, let's you know come at this level headed um, and just it, there's only a benefit to being able to, to see inward. Right. So Tori talking about therapy based on the pillows and the gong, have I gone to therapy? <laughs> oh my God. Have I'm going to say, have I been? you've got it. You've got it. <laughs> we are spiritual in I've here. I've been to therapy. <laughs> you can tell by the stars. Okay. Yeah. Because it was one of those situations for me where I, I lost um, over and over larger sums of capital just, again and again and again and again i was like oh it's me i'm the problem it's oh. me hi taylor swift <laughs> right <laughs> first thing i thought of <laughs> it's me. that was my problem isn't that wild yeah and Gosh. so in 2017 when i got rich again for the fourth time and i was like i'm not going to lose it okay i just said yes to all the things and i just ripped my ego apart and i was like listen i don't care what it is what therapy, what counselor, what session. I went to AA. I went to different churches. Okay. Did all the things, all the prayers, whatever I could do to learn that internal awareness. It's and huge. I can promise for any of you watching, that's the piece that will help you elevate your game from a money standpoint or just a health and happiness standpoint. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You There will be You'll no be downside to this. There, you, there is only benefit. <laughs> <laughs> There's no downside. <laughs> it's only only upside. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna spend a little bit of money, a little bit of time, and you're gonna be a lot better <laughs> at all aspects of your life. Yeah. So to discuss therapy and to go back to the me losing in 2017, I started saying yes to everything. I feel like as traders, many traders, most of them, are probably already in a position currently where they could probably use the money in their accounts to do things they want to do. Okay. So an example would be, let's say you have a trader and his name is, I don't know, random out of the air, Craig. Craig. And he's got, Craig's got $300,000 in his IRA and he's trading whatever, futures or palladium or stocks or crypto or whatever. 
And he's like, my goal in life is to take a month long vacation to Europe with my family, wife and kids. We're going to fly first class. We're going to enjoy Europe. When I make $40,000 trading, then I will do this with my family. Mm. What's your take on that? Oh, I am so anti. So anti. <laughs> Absolutely not. There is so many times where you will never get if I get this or hit that goal. You don't know. There's so many things that the universe could throw at you. Like, absolutely do it now is is my is my my motto there. I oh that's it's almost it's almost triggering. It's, it's just like uh, just gonna, just because I saw you get angry. I understand. I understand people that, that have it. that mindset. And it's so limiting, mm -hmm. and it hurts me to see it where people are like, okay, I have to wait till here. I got to wait till this. And I'm like, oh, if you only knew, if you could just do it now, the how much it would open up your mind to be like, okay, if, if he went ahead and took that trip instead of waiting until he made a $40,000 trade, what he would come back with would be uh -oh. a completely different level. Here oh my comes. gosh, he's got to do it again. Here she he's, comes. <laughs> no, this is it though. Just the mindset he would have coming back to be like, okay, that was the greatest. Now how do I do it again? Then his work life will change. I bet you he'll make that 40000 in the very next trade. Just that it opens up your mindset to where you truly experienced what you wanted. So I think waiting for that if and when, absolutely not. Don't do it. I'm with you. I'm with you. Especially if you have the, the ability to do it. Right? Yes, if yes. There's, if it's something otherworldly, right? And you're like, I want to own a yacht. And you got $12,000. <laughs> All right. Right. Fair. <laughs> cool. Fun dream. Yes. Have the dream. Dreams are amazing. Right? Yeah. They're, it's better to be pulled by your purpose than pushed by your pain. Yes. Totally agree. But in the meantime, between your $12,000 account and the yacht, what are some things that you can do? Yeah. If you're like, I want to give $100,000 to charity one day. Sweet. Let's let's start with 100 Yeah. Right? Oh, my gosh. Make absolutely. 300 bucks on a trade. Take out 100 Give to charity. And your body, your brain, your whole composition, your chemistry is going to go, Yes, I love that. Absolutely. You're going to get addicted to it because mm -hmm. it's a good thing. You're going to do it again. And your brain will get more of what you're addicted to. And this kind of goes into like um, I'm, I'm heavy on like manifesting and just putting things into the universe, even if that's like uh, spiritually or even scientifically, to be honest, the chemicals in your brain, if you say something over and over again enough, like it's, it's at the forefront of your mind, you're going to do it or it's just inevitable. So, and whether that's, you know, praying or just saying it as many times as you can, there's, there's two sides of it. There's, it's scientifically proven and it's spiritually proven. But if you can get yourself to, to say something enough or do it, and like you said, if he, the experience he felt just doing that hundred dollars, mm -hmm. naturally he's going to figure out how to make that to continue it, to keep mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe even at a bigger scale. So once you kind of experience it, whatever chemicals are released in your brain that you're like, okay, I, I've felt it. It feels good. Let's naturally, it's just natural that it's going to, he's going to put himself in position to be able to do it again and maybe bigger next time. And I think that, that just, that's with everything, your job, your career, your trading, your life, just putting things in the forefront, saying them over again, writing them down, experiencing even a small amount if you can. But yeah, that's, that's absolutely it. <laughs> I think traders should make that like into a soundtrack <laughs> and then put like a cool beat behind it. Well, Mixtape's coming soon. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry. <laughs> good, good, good. I'll take the, I'll take this moment to say about the psychology piece. Uh, I have been working on a book for three years. Okay. And it's called master yourself, master the markets. Point blank period. That's right? it right there. Because That's like, drop the mic. It's all the internal work Very and so. it, it's really all of my mental failures and all the things I did incorrectly. And I was like, okay, I'm, I have now taken 15 years of, of stupid tax and I put it into a book. <laughs> oh yeah. So okay. If you're watching this, you want to snag it, feel free to. That's Tori, amazing. This Congrats. has been awesome. Yeah. I love your energy. <laughs> Thank you. Your vibe is refreshing. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's Thank you refreshing. so much. Thank you. Last question. Okay. Last question. It's kind of a little dark. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Let's pretend you're both on an airplane and the front of the plane just rips off. You go flying into the air. <laughs> somehow you still have your phone on you. Somehow you still have service. What's the last trade you're taking on the way down? You got five minutes. Oh my gosh. All right. The last trade. The trade has to be done in five minutes. Well, you're going to hit the ground in five minutes. Well, you're so. right. You're right. <laughs> you're at terminal <laughs> velocity. Right. Fair, fair. All right. Um, I'm going to say I probably, we're going to say this scenario happens five years from now. Not really, but this is the mindset. Um, I've probably got, you know, family that's ready. I'm going to put everything I have, mm -hmm. full everything. Bore, full send. And I won't have to close it, so they'll reap the benefits of whatever comes after. Correct. We're going to put it in. Oh, Lord. We're doing everything. We're doing everything. Full send. 
gosh. Okay, with with the way that crypto's going and uh, the the indexes and everyone is, I feel like, clawing for, for gold or some sort of tangible thing, I would say I would probably put it all into gold. That's my, that's... Shares, options... Futures, all of it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> no, wait, no, wait. No, futures do have expiration, so that wouldn't work. Um, you can place a call to your uncle. Be like, roll the contract. <laughs> roll it. Just keep no, it no, rolling. No, you, you can't okay, make a phone fair, call. Fair. Remember, you said this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that was a dual question, if that was for both of us. It is, yeah. uh, okay, so, so I'm on a plane, and the front of the plane rips off. Is this correct? I was gone. Oh, yeah, okay. and you've been sucked out. <laughs> yep. Um, puts on Boeing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. I see what you did there. I like it. I mean, you know. <laughs> to be fair, that was an excellent. Wow. You just blew my mind. Excellent. Excellent answer. Thank you. Yeah. And, and what's cool is my wife knows options. The only, you know, it, it, I'll probably probably longer term options. So it's not gonna be a huge explosion of profits, <laughs> but she knows how to trade options. So she could close the puts. Oh, okay. See, you got Fingers it. Crossed. Easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> this was really remarkable. And I appreciate it. For everyone out there on the interwebs of social media, we also hope that this brought enlightenment, enrichment, education, entertainment into your life. Thank you for spending some time with both myself and Tori Trades on your phone, on your computer, on your internet connection device, wherever you are in the world, the sun's shining somewhere. We love you so much and have an amazing rest of your day.